We work for members of Congress who are fighting the good fight for us, and we have a new friend in PDA who came to us by way of a campaign. He's somebody who stood with us on 676, which was the single-payer health bill. He was somebody who stood up early on to say no to the Patriot Act and has continued to fight to repeal the Patriot Act. And he's also a friend of the Robin Hood tax. And he came by way of our New Jersey chapter, and I wanted to give Mary Ellen an opportunity to do the official introduction for our next guest. Mary Ellen, please, you're on. <laughs> Well, I don't know if Threshold needs a, an introduction, but uh, what I tell everybody now is if they will just go to his website and see those 10 amazing commercials for every issue that you really care about, he told us about them in 15 seconds and they blow you away. So he's right on all the issues. If we could, let's give Congressman Threshold the PDA welcome. Thank you for taking the time. Welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate uh, progressive Democrats. Uh, Lowercase and uppercase. Uh, it's, uh, we, we need you. Uh, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the Democrats uh, around the country are, I think, are hungering for progressive ideas um, and progressive advocacy. And, uh, well, you're, you're providing it and I really appreciate it. Um, as Mary Ellen just said, I'm, I'm uh, just off a campaign. Some would call it ill-advised or ill-fated. <laughs> anyway, I got clobbered. But <laughs> um, with the help of lots of progressives, uh, we made, uh, I think, some important points and uh, pushed that particular campaign uh, that particular election and then the ongoing general election uh, farther to the left. Um, so there's some advantage there. Um, and I think we had some terrific uh, educational videos that um, uh, some of those were kind of scripted on the spur of the moment. We had the camera crew there and we, and I said, well, look, I want to do something on, uh, uh, on Glass-Steagall. Uh, and you know why we have why too big to fail is too big to exist, you know. And I want to do something on a speculation tax, so that as stocks are bought and sold, uh, we discourage uh, the speculators who are making money at the expense of long-term investors, uh, and really perverting the whole purpose of a stock exchange. Um, and uh, who are actually injecting instability into the process. Uh, and look, I want to do something on carbon tax. We've got to get serious about climate change. Certainly in New Jersey, we shouldn't need reminders that climate change is real and it's costly in lives and dollars. And the most direct way to get at the root of the problem is to uh, uh, discourage the emission of greenhouse gases. And uh, a carbon tax is probably the most direct way to do that. And I want to do something about reducing Cold War expenditures, these legacy programs in the Department of Defense that add up to easily $100 billion a year that we could reduce and put to those uses that uh, Alan was just talking about. Uh, and, and I said, uh, well, let's, uh, let's have a message on uh, reduction of nuclear weapons. Rather than saying, well, let's sit down with the Russians when they're ready and talk about how we can reduce nuclear weapons, let's admit to ourselves and the world that they are not militarily useful. Um, and it is in our interest to reduce the number uh, regardless of what the uh, uh, Russians do. And, and let's have... Uh, uh, let's have a piece on uh, single-payer health care. Yes, we're trying to roll out the Affordable Care Act as best we can uh, to, to get the advantages of inclusion and the, well, the, the slightly mythical advantages in the Affordable Care Act of price control. Um, uh, let's make the best of that, but uh, let's not forget that in very short order, we should move to universal single payer. Uh, that's what. <laughs> and and let's uh, let's have a piece that explains that we should take 
any questions about the long-term survival of Social Security off the table. Just get these people to shut up about how, <laughs> how Social Security uh, is in jeopardy. And we do that by removing the cap on the FICA tax. So everybody, millionaires pay the same, same rate that you and everybody else pays. And with regard to fracking, well, let's have a piece on that too. And we did all this in an afternoon. You know, uh, let's uh, explain very quickly, simply what it's about, and say that the that the stampede to uh, drill for this carbon-based fossil fuel has gotten way ahead of the science, and uh, that uh, for the sake of our drinking water and our surface water and uh, other things, let's put a moratorium on fracking, okay. so that we'll have a chance to bring. Uh, fracking under the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act, you know, which it's exempt from now. Um, um, and, and, and by the way, you know, we really should say something about a, uh, a, an intelligence community that's out of control uh, and uh, repeal the Patriot Act and the FISA Amendments Act. I actually think we ought to go back to FISA from the 1970s, make some changes there too, but we didn't actually talk about that in, in these, I think, well-produced, really nice um, educational pieces. If you go to rushholt.com, you'll see uh, what Mary Ellen was talking about. Um, and, uh, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, let's, recognize that investment in education is the best investment we can make and offer uh, student loans at essentially zero percent interest or to put it another way charge the students the same interest rates that we charge banks to borrow money the discount rate uh, which is close to zero percent and uh, uh, why should students have to pay more uh, to borrow money uh, than banks do. So it was all those things. The afternoon ran out, so we didn't get to do a piece <laughs> on um, universal pre-K, which was something else that I was running on uh, in, in, uh, uh, in this Senate race. Um, and uh, changing the whole framing of the immigration issue from one of how we're going to solve this problem to how we're going to embrace this opportunity. If we could only change the debate about immigration to one of opportunity, uh, we would get better legislation and Americans would feel better about it. Um, and indeed, it is an opportunity <laughs> that uh, you know every generation of immigrants in this country, although they have faced bias and even disdain, um, they have enriched our country, socially, culturally, and economically. Every wave of immigrants has done that. Uh, so why are we so resistant to the idea? Um, and um, I, uh, uh, throughout all of this, I guess, I was communicating the message, or trying to, evidently not quite effectively enough, <laughs> but uh, that um, the, the government is something to be um, uh, well, cheered. <laughs> that, that there are things we can do better together than we can do separately. Uh, and this country has not achieved its greatness over a couple of centuries by saying to Americans, you're on your own. We didn't have to have uh, a, uh, you know, uh, 1776. We didn't have to have 1770, 1789 and the Federalist Papers to say you're on your own. What we said then was, no, we're in this together because there are a lot of things we can do together to uh, uplift each other. Um, so, um, that is the progressive message, uh, <laughs> as, I, as I see it. Um, I've been asked to talk a little bit today uh, about uh, the um, 
NSA, uh, the Patriot Act, the FISA Amendments Act. Um, I introduced, actually, it was on the day that the Amash Amendment almost passed, uh, which, uh, as you may recall, would have defunded the NSA from any activities that we had then recently been reading about in the papers that some of us had been, uh, had known about for longer, uh, that were really intrusive in a way that, uh, intrusive in the private lives of Americans in a way that actually reduces our security. Uh, I, I wanted and want to make the argument that it's not a simple trade-off between security and liberty. Uh, the geniuses who put together the Fourth Amendment understood that when you ask those people who have this, well, you would call it, you'd have to call it fearsome power, the investigators, the enforcers, uh, if you ask them to go before a court and demonstrate that they know what they're doing, that they're not operating on a hunch or a bias or a suspicion, an unfounded suspicion, you will get better safety. If they have to prove that they know what they're doing and they're not operating on hunches, you'll get better law enforcement, better intelligence, better investigation, a more secure citizenry. Um, so it is not some abstract civil liberty that is impossible to define. It is a more, uh, it is truly a more orderly society where the government is uh, held to a high standard to do a good job. <laughs> uh, and you don't do a good job by uh, uh, intruding on people's privacy uh, on the basis of a prejudice, uh, a profile, uh, or you know, or a hunch. So, um, the Patriot Act, which was passed in the few days after September 11th, 2001. Uh, was based on a fear that there were uh, a widespread he fear here on Capitol Hill that there and around the country that there were terrorist cells in just about every town in America. I mean, we had seen hijackers board planes in Maine, and they had lived in Florida for a while, and uh, you know, they they'd been taking flying lessons uh, uh, in what was it, Arizona, uh, whatever, or. Uh, Anyway, the point was, people began to suspect they're everywhere, just, you know, kind of like communists were under every bed before. It seemed that terrorists were everywhere, and in the same kind of fear, the Patriot Act was passed. There was, in the Patriot Act, something we insisted on, which was a sunset, an expiration. It had to be reauthorized, or it would go away after a few years. Um, unfortunately, um, the, the uh, sunset didn't apply to all provisions of the Patriot Act. And when the sunset came due, it was rubber stamped into reauthorization and any further sunset was removed. Uh, so we're stuck with it unless we repeal it. So I introduced a bill to repeal the Patriot Act and repeal the FISA Amendments Act. Um, it's gaining some attention. Uh, now, and I would ask your help in spreading the word about the wisdom of doing this. Some will say it's radical to repeal the whole thing. And, you know, actually, right now, repeal is repeal of legislation is not an idea that Democrats uh, 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 find favor with because it's mostly applied to the Affordable Care Act uh, <laughs> uh, attempts to repeal. But in this case, uh, I'd appreciate it if. Uh, if you spread the word that this is what the sunset was supposed to be. Uh, and uh, appealing the Patriot Act and then the subsequent FISA Amendments Act, which has been a, the excuse for this wholesale vacuum cleaner 
um, in tr very intrusive practice of the NSA, which as you see from today's New York Times, was carried out in such a sweeping way that the NSA didn't even know what they were doing. Read today's New York Times. They're saying, we went to the judge back in 2009, and this is something that was released in the Snowden Papers, that we wouldn't know about if it hadn't been for that leak, um, that the country wouldn't know about. Um, we went to the judge back in 2009 and said, look, we violated your, your guidelines. Uh, we collected on Americans uh, without good cause. Um, and the real reason was that there, and these are their words, there was no one in the NSA who understood our entire program. <laughs> so they got so carried away, they didn't even know what they were doing. Uh, so it is high time we repeal it. Now, there's something else that I put into that bill um, that, again, in light of the, the subsequent release of Snowden's, uh, of Snowden papers, makes me look prescient. Um, there's a provision in there that says the NSA may not coerce a, an American company to put in a trap door in hardware or software. This has to do with encryption. They were, uh, it appears, uh, make, requiring manufacturers and software designers to put in a, a method for NSA to overcome uh, any uh, encryption uh, so that they could s steal the information that was being communicated um, even while the company was advertising, we have this really good encryption. So if you want to do banking online, if you want to send messages from your parent company to your subsidiary company, uh, you can do it with good encryption. The NSA, in the usual uh, intelligence community hubris, uh, believed and claimed well, nobody but us will know. <laughs> we will keep this secret. And we will be able to collect information only under appropriate court-approved guidelines. Uh, and nobody else will be able to collect that information. And everybody will be happy. Well, of course it comes out. And so now we are telling all the world, and all the world suspected before and after the Snowden Papers now knows, that the merchandise, these encryption chips that are manufactured in the United States, are defective deliberately. So this legislation that would repeal the Patriot Act and the FISA Amendments Act also would prevent the NSA from requiring, coercing a company from designing these trap doors. Um, and that is also something that we should want. And I would ask your help in spreading the word of why we should pass a law to do that now. So um, the basic reason behind all this is that I'm afraid that in the fear that was generated 12 years ago uh, today, the government has changed the basic contract with, its, with her citizens. Um, and the government now regards Americans as suspects first and citizens second. We'll collect on you. We won't really look at what we collect on you, and, uh, but we've got it, because we're not quite sure that you're on the up and up. I mean, isn't that backwards from the way this country was created? It used to be that the greatest compliment you could pay to a person in the United States of America is to call them citizen. 
not consumer, <laughs> not uh, uh, not uh, <laughs> you know, not not fat cat, not person of any right, not person of interest, whether it's positive interest or negative interest. You would call them citizen, and you were presumed to be as good as anyone else, unless there was probable cause to believe otherwise. And now this is flipped on its head. You're a suspect first. And, and then if the NSA is satisfied that you're doing OK, well, then you can be regarded as a citizen. Uh, I think that's a serious change. Uh, and it's why we have to rein in the intelligence community. And this repeal act is part of that. So I ask your support uh, in that. Those, those buzzers mean that there's a vote underway, but it's not. I still have a few minutes. Before we let you run away. And so I'd like to hear from you. I talked a lot more than I intended to. No, thank you very um, much. It was no but, accident on this uh, anniversary. We asked you to talk about repealing the Patriot Act. We're on a live feed that's going out to Real News Network and also oh, good. to good. the PDA community. I should have Can said more to the camera, but okay. No, you, it's you fine. You caught me, right? Okay, good. Or speak up. I know, before we open up the questions, <laughs> Just uh, for a minute or let, Yeah, let me find out where we are on this vote. And but okay. keep talking, please. Sure. I'll check. If you could just take a minute into the camera so folks that aren't in the room and speak up. We've been told, I know with Laura, there's not going to be any problem on this one. But those of you with questions, just speak up. Just into there, how many co-sponsors on your bill? Somebody that's just new dialing in, what can they do in the next 48 hours, the next couple of weeks to help you with this effort to repeal the Patriot on this ominous anniversary? Well, one of the good things about this issue is it um, goes across party lines, across the aisle, and this hits people of all kinds in all walks of life. So I would urge anyone to uh, contact, uh, I mean, it's, it's never a good idea for a member of Congress to sick the people on some other member of Congress. But I do, Educate. Hope, Educate. I, I, I do, I do Educate. hope you will, Educate. Educate. I, I do hope you will express to your representative uh, the seriousness with which you take, I hope you take, uh, this basic issue of, of the attitude of the government toward the citizen and the need to bring the uh, uh, intelligence community uh, back in line so that they really have some oversight uh, from Congress and the general public about what they are doing in your name Perfect. or to you. <laughs> Ooh. Bill number. Oh yes, I have it right here in front of me. Uh, HR two eight one eight. It's the repeal of the Surveillance State Act. And we'll get that out to the community. Yeah. If we could, uh, not many co-sponsors. Well, that's uh, where we so come in. That's, yeah. that's our job. Yeah. But well, but there are some real conservatives uh, and libertarians uh, who tend to be supportive of this sort of thing. No, we work closely and with them on food stamps. So, it, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, if you don't live in a district with a progressive member, uh, there's still something you can do. Uh, uh, we, we know uh, that. Yeah. If we could then, Congressman, yeah. we've got our closing up before we do that. A couple of questions for the Congressman. Please. Again, just identify yourself, who you are, direct your questions to the Congressman. We'll start here over on the right. Russell? Yeah, and you are? Russell Green. I am the and uh, speak up, Russell, please. I am the uh, chair of PDA Scott Global Warming Team. Good. And I was, uh, I have to start by saying I agree with everything you said. <laughs> uh, but specifically with the carbon tax, I'd like uh, to ask you for some guidance, perhaps, as to how we might move that forward. Last uh, two years ago, we were working to support uh, the Save Our Climate Act. Uh, but yeah. now, uh, with no actual carbon tax, I think uh, possible, or I, I should say, um, to support at the moment. And the notion from most groups that I work with being that unless it's a bipartisan effort, it would be very difficult to move forward. What do you believe or how would you recommend we approach it? Well, before we get to whether it's a, a carbon tax or cap and trade or um, a um, geoengineering to undo the effects of it, and you know, I see people shuddering. And in fact, I, I know some people who are researchers who are working in the area of geoengineering, which is to modify the upper atmosphere to reflect sunlight, things like that, uh, which sounds 
Frankensteinian, uh, you know, where the where, where the body on the table is the entire planet, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, 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 some of them are working on it because they think it's scary enough; it might bring people to their senses in dealing with the root cause of climate change, which is carbon emissions. Uh, uh, in any case, before we get to how we solve it, we have a lot of makeup work to do, a lot of, of uh, remedial work to do um, uh, to convince Americans that there is an immediate real problem that is costly to them in lives and dollars and that there's something that can be done about it. We lost a lot of ground over the last few years. Uh, at first I was at a loss, I was puzzled by that loss of public opinion in support of doing something about climate change until I began to see the numbers of what the Koch brothers and other interested people actually spent in dollars. Huge amounts of money for disinformation here. Um, so we have to overcome that before we can talk about the solution to it. And, and work on that, uh, that's my day job. How do yeah. you, how do you uh, recommend we try to work with uh, um, Congress to achieve yeah. that? I suppose, yeah, okay. I suppose that wildfires, barges running aground on the Mississippi, hurricanes in places where they haven't occurred before, uh, uh, tornadoes, uh, and other things are useful cases in point. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll be briefer now because I really must go. Uh, uh, Alan, congratulations on the work. Thank you. Uh, that's integrity. And I want to know, are, are you doing anything now at this time to try to see that you can have paper ballots that can be audited so that uh, they won't have software manipulated by Republican uh, you know, companies that are producing machines? Yeah, well, thank, thanks for, uh, I mean, I've again and again introduced legislation to provide accessible, auditable voting. Um, and uh, on the federal level, we have not succeeded in setting standards. The good news is that many of the states, and now about three quarters of Americans, are using auditable voting systems. Uh, in those states that aren't yet doing the audits, but have the auditable systems, there's something you can do to make sure that uh, routinely, the results are audited, not just when there's a close election. Uh, you know, if you wanted to hack an election, uh, I'd hack it so I won't, you know, there was a six or seven or eight percent vote margin. People say, well, I guess we called that one wrong, but that must be what the voters actually did. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, one other quick question. Quick question. Yeah. You've got to go yeah. vote. I'm going to get yeah. in trouble. Okay. Yes, Robin Hood. Uh, so I'm Jennifer Flynn, and I'm yeah. Organization. We're, Thank you. Uh, we're on the steering yeah. committee of the Robin Hood Tax Campaign. Thank you so much for your video where you laid out a Robin Hood Tax better than anyone that I've ever seen lay out, explain it before. Uh, on September 17th, we're having a big mobilization to the opening day of the United Nations General Assembly. Uh, they're going to be talking about... This is in New York or around York? the country? Yeah, in New York. Um, Let me know about yeah, it. Send me the information. September. Write something in, you know, the Star Ledger, get something Okay, send, send, send me information. Uh, you, you we'll have, get it to you. Here. Yeah, you can yes. let, let him know. We'll get it to you. Can we thank the congressman? Yeah. Uh, it's been quite a day.